Traxxas ID connectors. Just going to talk a little bit about these. I know there's some other videos on them, but I don't think it covers all the points that these are trying to achieve. So what we've got on the table here, we've got the Traxxas charger, which these plug straight into. We've got an eye charger, which in my opinion is one of the best chargers out there, which I'll come on to in a minute. We'll show you some comparisons on that. It's sitting on one of these lovely 3D printed stands, which a power supply normally goes underneath. Little tool holder there, again, a 3D printed one, which we can supply. And an assortment of other connectors. We've got some various Traxxas ones here. Here's the original adapter out of the ID, sorry, the UDR truck, which I've removed. You can put different connectors in. This is one to take the uh, XT90 connectors. And in my truck, which I'll show you in a minute, we put XT60 just because that's what I had to hand, which are these connectors. There's also some other connectors here. Uh, the Dean's connectors, which are quite good connectors. Often used in racing, um, can't get in reverse polarity. There are some cheap ones on the market, avoid them. They don't connect together very well, or they're very difficult to get to part. So you wanna get decent ones of those. And the other option is these bullet connectors. These are what we tend to use for racing, but we're not talking about that now, so we won't come on to that. And these you can plug in the wrong way around reverse polarity, so you don't wanna do that. Traxxas have just tried to simplify the process of charging lithium polymer batteries. Here's your traditional setup, main charge cable which plugs into your charger, and then a balance cable which plugs into the balance port and the charger. The Traxxas chargers do have the balance port, which is hidden under there. So you can charge two cell and three cell, yeah, two cell and three cell. So that would plug into there if need be. But Traxxas have done away with that, or tried to. Well, they have successfully actually. They've incorporated all these balance cables into these two wires here. And is it has pins there and there. If you can see those red and black wires there, that's basically what it comes off there. And it basically takes these two points there. So when it's coupled with either that point or that point, it can then ensure that these come up to 4.2 volts. In this adapter, which is what I had to get, don't like buying these things because I like to make most of my connectors up but I had to buy this one. I don't know if you can see, there's some pins in there. For the three cell, there's just two. When you go up to the four cells and bigger, there's space for more pins there. I'm a little bit uh, not convinced that those pins will stay straight and connect forever, but we'll see. So when you use this as an adapter cable, it plugs into there. We go the right way around, like that. And then, I can plug this into my normal charger. And you'll see, if anyone can see, we have the voltage of each of the cells there. What I will also be doing is I'm going to compare the performance of this charger to this one. So we can see when you put it into full charge, does it come up to 4.2 volts per cell? And when you put it into storage mode, which is what this battery has been done, does it put them into an accurate voltage? You can see these are at 3.8, which is roughly the approximate storage voltage. So that one's actually fine. The batteries must be charged up to 4.2 volts per cell. And that's what the balancing does. It ensures that each cell is up to 4.2. If we use the example of these AA batteries, these are your three lithium polymer cells. Each one of these needs to be charged up to 4.2 volts, 4.2 volts. And that is really important, particularly when you're using two packs in something like a UDR or an X-Max or something, you need to make sure that both of the packs are fully charged. Because if they're not, if one pack's not fully charged, one of these cells could go below the critical three volts. If it goes below three volts, if any of these cells go below three volts, they won't work. They are ruined, you get problems with them and they're, they're, they're fit for the bin really. So the balance charging ensures that all these comes up to 4.2 volts. When you run the batteries, you'll see on the cars they have what they call the low voltage. The car will slow down. That means one of these cells, or in fact it doesn't detect each cell, it just detects the overall voltage of the pack. And in the case of when you're running six cells or four cells, it detects the overall voltage. So when you plug your batteries in, you have two that plug into there like that. It won't be looking, it can't detect the individual voltage of each pack, it's just looking at your overall voltage. When that starts to get to, to roundabout, 
whatever 3.5 volts per cell would equal it will start to slow the car down so you don't go into the low voltage state in these lipos and cause a problem on these batteries you'll see three cell the information on them three cell which means it's three cells example there you can get two cells you can get one cell you can get four cell five cell there's there's loads of different variations 25c that means theoretically this pack will do 25 times the capacity as an output so it's 5000 milliamps so theoretically we'll do 125 amps for a sustained period of time i, I would question that i don't think we're putting that sort of current but we'll come on to that in a minute 50c means for an instantaneous time it could provide 50 times the capacity which is 250 amps so for an instantaneous um, burst so if you hard acceleration it will take 50 it won't take it for very long but it will take it anything over that the lot battery is likely to go into a low voltage state and one of the cells will go below the low voltage 2c means you can charge it up at a maximum of two times the capacity of the battery five amps or five five thousand milliamps so five amps maximum you can charge this pack up safely is 10 amps the Traxxas will charge singularly at four or if you use the um, combined function it will charge them up at eight so that's well within the, the capacities of that so what we are going to do in another video is we say we're going to compare the performance of this charger see what it charges the cells up to see if it is putting them into 4.2 volts per cell compared to the iCharger we will then look at when it puts it into storage as to what is put into storage you should be around about 3.85 volts per cell give or take the beauty of lipos is once they're in storage you can leave them there for quite a while and you haven't got to worry about them they're not like nickel, nickel metal hydrides that will lose voltage you can leave them pretty much as they are one little tip if they start to swell though don't use them i have um, dabbled in rejuvenating some very low voltage cells I'll come on to that if people are interested or if people want to. I wouldn't really recommend that because it is not the best practice, but there is a way of doing that. This one here, as I say, is a traditional style battery. It's the same sort of performance theoretically, but I can tell you now it isn't. I've compared it, and again, we'll come on to comparing these in another video. It's bigger, it's shorter, it's taller, and it doesn't fit in the UDR as I found to my peril. There is a way of making more space in the battery box for the UDR so you can get about another five to 10 mil of um, battery space, which means you can put some slightly bigger lipos than this in it. And again, I'll show you there. It's a 3D printed part I've designed for that. So that's a little whistle stop tour of the lipos and the connectors. Hopefully that's been helpful.